I shall miss that when we leave Casablanca. It's gracious of you to share it with me. Good day, ma'am. Monsieur, good day. <laughs> You're a man, please. No beating about the bush. Right to the point. You cannot see the world around you without looking through the lens of EDP. EDP is to humans what water is to fish and air is to land animals. It is the way we are. When humans look at a simple problem, it is only simple because they possess evolution design presumption. Give the same simple problem to a dog and you will begin to understand how difficult the problem is for non-humans. Give the same simple problem to non-living matter and we have the subject at hand. If we ask the question, why did the chicken cross the road? It refers to a living thing having a reason to cross the road. All living things, even mold, have self-motivation of some sort. But when we ask the question, why did the boulder cross the road? It refers to some non-living event like an earthquake causing an avalanche. Now man's problem is when he tries to understand non-living events, he is blinded by his presumption of order and design, or EDP. When you leave Earth, there is no chance of events based on self-motivated forces. Only life can produce self-motivated forces. All forces in space are the result of something that happened at the Big Bang. The rules and constants by which all matter behaves have nothing to do with self-motivated life forces on Earth. Scientists understand this in a practical way. It's what forces NASA, for example, to plan for any circumstance before shooting a rocket into space. NASA scientists never take the attitude of crossing a bridge when they get to it. They plan for every possible bridge and write up a procedure for how to cross those bridges. Apollo 13 was an excellent example of how you don't assume anything when it comes to survival in the lifeless regions of space. Control on Aquarius. They don't have control? Do we miss a step here? Control? What the hell happened? Control. No, we just want to ask you. Are you telling me that? Okay, we're all out of whack. I'm trying to pitch down, but we're yawn to the left. Why can't I know this out? Two is on the front, tax like it. By a very narrow margin that we're going to get Lovell, Hayes, and Swigert back alive. NASA depended on the laws and constants of our cosmos to go to the moon and back. The centrifugal forces of the moon and the earth had to be used with less than 1% margin of error. In other words, scientists would not have attempted to go to the moon if they couldn't depend on the unchangeable laws and constants of our cosmos. These laws and constants happened at the Big Bang. They don't change. Science depends on their not changing. But life isn't like that. Life constantly changes and regenerates itself. When you cut your hand, you expect it to heal. When you get a cold, you expect your antibodies to kill the cold germs. When your feet gets blisters, you know that in a few days the blisters will heal or make calluses to withstand the rubbing when you walk. Even the simplest cells of our bodies cooperate with billions of other cells to accomplish amazingly complex manufacturing and maintenance functions. This life perspective causes us to attribute regenerative characteristics to non-living events and prevents us from seeing the improbability of these non-living events causing complexity. We can accept the math in our heads, but we just can't believe the revelation of what the math reveals. Even our quantum theories are totally dependent on life forces to observe non-living events. We cannot escape the influence of the life perspective, or EDP, on our judgment. The monkeys with typewriter's theorem is proven absurd with simple math. Complex things cannot arise from simple random events. In fact, even if you were to convert all the matter in our cosmos to monkeys with typewriters, 13.7 billion years is not enough time to produce even a 48 character space sentence. If all the matter in the cosmos, which is 10 to the 80th power particles, were made into monkeys with typewriters, there would be 10 to the 53rd power monkeys with typewriters. If the typewriters had just 28 keys, that's 26 letter keys plus a space and a period key, the probability of any 48 character space sentence could be figured with a factor of 28. The sentence, the first living cell is a problem for atheists, would have only one chance in 28 to the 48th power 
or in base 10, 10 to the 69th power. If 48 characters were typed by each of the 10 to the 53rd power monkeys with typewriters per minute, all the monkeys with typewriters would type would be just 10 to the 13th power blocks of 48 character spaces in 13.7 billion years. 10 to the 13th power times 10 to the 53rd power is only 10 to the 66th power. You are still way short of 10 to the 69th power. You would have to increase your time to 13.7 trillion years or increase your monkeys with typewriters to 10 to the 56th power to type the sentence by chance. But even if all the monkeys with typewriters could type a 48 character space sentence, it would only prove that every bit of matter in the cosmos would have to be used for the experiment. No scientist believes that the first living cell was a cooperative effort of all the matter in the cosmos. In fact, the distance between stars is so great and the age of the cosmos is so short that any cooperation between planets and stars is impossible. Even the ideas of stars and planets cooperating is the result of EDP. Because of our EDP, we simply cannot accept the revelation of the math which reveals the impossibility of complexity arising by chance. Dawkins' God delusion, or what I call EDP, is the result of evolution. It affects everyone. In the case of atheist scientists, it prevents them from accepting the revelation that complex things cannot come from random, non-living events. EDP forces normally rational scientists to attribute regenerative characteristics to non-living events, thus preventing them from accepting the mathematical facts of non-life. When scientists write books about the origin of life, they do so with the a priori assumption that the cosmos happened by chance. Up until the last half of the 20th century, such a thought was reasonable. But in the last 50 years, the Big Bang Theory and all the scientific data from the Hubble Space Telescope upset the whole idea of the cosmos being eternal and infinite. Nevertheless, in order for them to continue the theory that life happened by chance, scientists have been forced to construct elaborate explanations that Richard Dawkins would normally call flying spaghetti monsters if it weren't for the fact they were necessary to eliminate the need of a designer. Um, there's a, one physicist called Lee Smolin who makes it very much more explicitly Darwinian. He actually thinks that universes give birth to daughter universes. Uh, he suggests in black holes. So that there's a kind of family tree of universes. And each universe can trace its pedigree backwards through its mother universe, its grandmother universe, and so on. And at the moment of birth, which he considers to be a black hole, the laws and constants of physics in the, in the daughter universe are slightly tweaked versions of the mother universe's laws and constants. Now, the qualities that make for a successful universe, success in the Darwinian sense of giving birth to baby universes, are qualities like lasting long enough to form galaxies and stars and therefore black holes, because you need black holes to make the, to, to, give, to give birth to baby universes. And those are the very same qualities that you need in order to give rise to the conditions for life. So Smolin even thinks of a kind of natural selection and an actual evolutionary progression towards universes that get better and better at building baby universes and co coincidentally get better and better at making the conditions for, for evolution. Dawkins quotes Lee Smolin extensively in The God Delusion. To his credit, Smolin acknowledges in the prologue of his book, The Life of the Cosmos, that what he's presenting in the book is a frank speculation, if you will, a fantasy. This fantasy is inspired by diverse sources and issues, some physical, some mathematical, and some biological, and others philosophical.